This is your Tech News Briefing for Friday, November 11th. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. It has been an incredibly bumpy ride for crypto firms this year. As the prices of crypto have fallen, some big names in the industry have collapsed. For a while, one bastion of stability for the industry was Sam Bankman-Fried, founder of the cryptocurrency exchange FTX. He kept a positive outlook for the sector and even bought up large stakes in struggling businesses like crypto lender BlockFi and Voyager Digital. Just a few weeks ago, Bankman Fried talked about possible future funding deals and acquisitions that FTX might make at the WSJ's Tech Live conference. I'm optimistic that that you know the funding is um, you know is there, and uh, you know to the extent that um, that it, it's you know of strategic importance for us, and I think I think it might be. I think that you know in this market there are a lot of opportunities that we're seeing, the types of opportunities that we did not see last year. Um, to uh, make, you know, really efficient acquisitions that can help grow out what we can do as a business. That all changed this week. Facing a liquidity crisis, FTX froze customers' withdrawals and agreed to be purchased by rival crypto exchange Binance. But just a day later, Binance pulled out, citing concerns that came up during its due diligence of FTX. Then on Friday, FTX filed for bankruptcy protection, and Bankman Freed stepped down as CEO. So how did things get to this point? And how could this whole saga affect the wider crypto space? Joining us to discuss all of that is WSJ crypto reporter Vicky Huang. Hi, Vicky. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me, Zoe. Can you start by reminding us what FTX is and how it became so big in the crypto space? So FTX is one of the largest crypto exchanges in the industry, and it was actually founded just three years ago, and it just grew really rapidly because of its very, up until this week, charismatic founder, Sam Beckman fried So the exchange focused a lot on derivatives. And one of their taglines is that FTX is an exchange built for traders, by traders. It also benefited from the fact that it's based offshore, first in Hong Kong and then in the Bahamas. So it was able to grow in an environment where sort of there's less regulatory restrictions. You know, as you say, Sam Bankman Freed or SBF, as he's sometimes called by crypto fans, he really built this company, this crypto exchange, into something that was very popular and very valuable. So take us back. How did it get into the situation that it is now? So in January, FTX's last funding round, the crypto exchange was valued at $32 billion, and the participating investors were basically a who's who of VCs and hedge funds and prominent private equity and even pension investors. And it really looked untouchable because of the marketing that the exchange has done, as well as the reputation of Sam Bettman Free as sort of one of the smartest crypto traders that is also lobbying in Washington, D.C. and branded himself as an effective altruist and is a vegan because of his concern for animal welfare. But what's underneath all this glamour and success is his other firm, Alameda Research, a trading firm he founded in 2017. Alameda Research is supposed to be a market maker that provides liquidity to crypto exchanges. But because both Alameda Research and FTX are majority owned by Sam Bankman fried there has been a lot of skepticism and doubt about the relationship between the two firms. People were worried that whether Alameda Research was getting preferential treatment on FTX or whether the funds between the two companies are commingled or separate. And then last week, we had this Coindesk report that showed us the balance sheet of Alameda Research as of June 30th was made up mostly of a token called FTT token, which is 
issued by FTX. And that report just sort of showed the close relationship between the two companies and called into doubt the financial strengths of Alameda Research because why is such a supposedly powerful trading firm would have so much of this FTT token, which is itself a highly illiquid token on its balance sheet. So how did investors react when that report came out? When the report first came out, investor reactions were pretty muted. There weren't a ton of selling of FTT going on, but that all changed on Sunday when the CEO of Binance, CZ, uh, short for Changpeng Zhao, tweeted that he was going to sell 580 million worth of FTT tokens over the coming months. So CZ's tweet set off a chain reaction of events. And before you know it, the price of FTT started plunging. Rumors about the potential insolvency of FTX started circulating and traders started withdrawing their deposits from FTX en masse. And Sam bankman free has came out and said that about $5 billion worth of withdrawal took place just over the past few days. Okay, so a, a massive liquidity crisis. We're also learning more about the relationship between Alameda Research and FTX. What more have we learned in the past couple of days? Some really shocking facts about close relationship between Alameda and FTX, even though Sam Batman fried or Alameda Research or FTX, they haven't come out and said anything or acknowledge any of these, but sources have been telling us that FTX loaned Alameda Research billions of dollars when some of Alameda Research's investments went bad during the months of crypto market carnage that we've had since May. So that really puts this whole thing into question because as an exchange, you're supposed to segregate customers' deposits from your own money. But here it seems like that Sam could potentially have sent users' deposits to Alameda Research. And we've heard from sources that the Justice Department and the Securities and Exchange Commission have investigations now into FTX. Have we heard from Sam Bankman-Fried, FTX, or Alameda about this whole situation? Yes, he has expressed his remorse for this whole situation. He has apologized to customers, investors, but he hasn't yet really offered any details about what went wrong or whether he sent money to Alameda Research. Who's going to feel the fallout from FTX's current crisis? Unfortunately, first of all, it's always going to be the retail investors who trusted the exchange, who trusted Sam with their deposits. So currently, withdrawals are paused on FTX, the international exchange. For a lot of international crypto traders that I've talked to, they are feeling pretty frustrated and disappointed. They don't expect to see their money ever again. And then another group of investors that stand to be burned as a result of this collapse of FTX are institutional investors who invested in the various rounds of FTX. And a lot of them are quite well-known Silicon Valley or Wall Street players. For example, Sequoia Capital has come out and said that they would mark down their investment in FTX to zero. So that's a complete wipeout of their investment. A lot of people are thinking that this so-called crypto winter where prices remain depressed and there is little to no trading volume is going to perhaps last a lot longer than they had expected. And for the industry, it's overall, it's a huge setback because we're looking at increased regulatory scrutiny and a lot of projects that are in progress are likely to be delayed. So it's just a lot of negative consequences for the players in the space. Just so much to break down here and so much to keep watching. Vicky Wong, WSJ Crypto Reporter, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. 
And that's it for Tech News Briefing this week. Our producer is Julie Chang. We had editorial support from Philana Patterson. Our supervising producer is Chris Zinsley. And I'm your host, Zoe Thomas. Thanks so much for listening and have a great weekend.